Hi everyone and welcome to another video tutorial on uh, pianocareer.com. In this video I'm going to answer Vicente's question about uh, the capriccio in C minor from Bach's Partita No. 2. Vicente asked me which is the best way to practice uh, the left hand starting from bar 10 in this capriccio and reaching bar 15. In this bars we have, uh, as I call them, little position shifts not exactly leaps or jumps, because the distance is too small to be called a real jump. We have tens. And now I'm going to demonstrate which is the best way to practice this kind of technique in order to be able to play it with ease in a fast tempo. As I already told you in the Ask Me a Piano Question page on my site, in the 8th bar, here I'm not sure if you can see uh, from this distance the score, but I already posted the score on my site as well. So uh, here in the 8th bar we have um, the theme presented in the 3rd voice, so we have to make sure that we emphasize the theme as always. Now I'm going to demonstrate in a slow tempo. So as you can see the theme has to be played really deep, really expressive. We, you can practice like that. Maybe even a little portamento sure that your wrist is relaxed and your hand, your fingers go into the depth of the keyboard for each note. So in a faster tempo you will not lose your stability. So as I already told you in my written answer, in the 10th bar the left hand makes the transition between the exposition of the theme and the interlude where it has to be played uh, soft and in the background. So let's play it one more time, this time really slow, so you can see how we make this diminuendo and how we reach the interlude with another touche, with another touch, with another kind of key attack and of course with a different dynamic, with a different attitude. So you can see here the left hand goes into the background. From this moment until the bar 15th it has to be played like really soft, but when you practice you can play it a little bit louder than necessary in order to make sure that you're comfortable. But as I told you in my article uh, you have to avoid this kind of key attack, the upward staccato, I don't know if I'm uh, correctly using the English term. In the Russian piano school we try not to play Bach with a light touche and uh, with a superficial key attack. Instead, we're striving towards achieving a very good cantability, which is similar to the sound of the violin or the sound of the organ, the sound of the human voice. That's why this kind of key attack, which is probably very good for playing Prokofiev, for example, is totally not appropriate for Bach. Yes, when you reach a fast tempo, these bars will be played, but when you practice slowly, Play them with a good portamento and the position shifts are not that big. So make sure, keep your hand, you see, uh, keep your palm uh, in a comfortable position. Don't stretch your finger too much because if you don't have like a very big hand, it will still be um, impossible for you to reach these uh, tenths and you don't need to play them legato. You have to play them on a very light, comfortable portamento. So practice these uh, position shifts in a slow tempo with a little bit of heaviness in your arm, making sure that the weight of your entire body coming from the back and the shoulders is reaching the tips of your fingers. And here you don't have tension at all. If you feel that a certain position shift is especially uncomfortable, you can practice it as I showed you in my demonstration for playing the bass in waltzes. The same kind of... you take only one leap and you practice it until you feel comfortable and then you can combine, for example, this leap and the first note of the next one. And then like this. So you can see there are many ways of uh, combining these position shifts in order to make them as comfortable as possible. After playing slowly, you can gradually increase the tempo and so on. But 
but uh, don't uh, try to play fast too soon. First of all, practice slowly and try to feel as comfortable as possible. When you feel that you have reached a certain level of mastery for the left hand, don't forget to combine it with the right hand. Again, uh, I suggest from the very beginning to practice each hand separately. First uh, the left hand because it is the foundation and then the right hand and learn each hand separately until again, as I already told you, feel comfortable. And then you can practice uh, both hands together, starting in a slow tempo with really relaxed arms and wrist and with a deep sound. Always try to avoid this kind of key attack. It is really superficial and when you'll increase the tempo you'll feel that you're losing your control over the keyboard, that you're hitting many wrong notes and that you're losing your stability. So, uh, when you start to playing both hands together from the beginning, for example, and so on, play with a relaxed arm and each finger has to reach the depth of the keyboard. The sound has to be at the same time deep, but not brutal. Not of course, this is a synthesizer and it cannot show exactly the same um, colors of the sound as the grand piano, but this is a professional synthesizer and uh, it has a really good quality of the sound. So please notice the difference. Now I'm playing with a brutal sound without softening it with my wrist. Now I'm uh, playing again from the entire weight of my arm, softening the sound with the flexibility of my elbows and my wrists. So this is the difference in the key attack. This is the playing principle we use here. Of course, when you'll increase the tempo, your touche will become lighter. Do you see the difference? <laughs> okay, now let's move to the second page and uh, to the bars uh, 30 and uh, 35, again practicing the left hand. Here in the bar 30, as I already wrote, you need to bring out this element of the theme. So uh, it goes like this. Please notice the playing principle that I use here. I don't play like this. Instead, I channel the entire weight of my arm towards this part, towards the thumb. And the, these fingers that play the third voice, the lower voice, they are lighter. And this way, when all the weight of the arm goes into certain fingers, we are able to emphasize the theme or a certain voice as much as we want. So you see how much difference it's possible to make uh, in the sound volume in one hand. This is a very useful skill when playing uh, polyphonic pieces. From here the left hand, as I already wrote, uh, goes into the background and our attention has to shift towards the right hand. However, in order to be able to do that, we have to master really well the left hand and we have to practice it until it becomes really, really comfortable. Again, I suggest starting in a slow tempo, even portamento, if you feel that uh, you lack stability and especially if you feel that um, you are tensed and there is tension in your elbow and in your wrist. Most important secret when practicing portamento is playing each note with the entire weight of your arm feeling how the arm relaxes on each note. Otherwise, you'll simply play with a brutal sound and you won't achieve anything. Okay, I'm gonna demonstrate now this portamento practicing method in a slow tempo. As you can see, and my wrists are really relaxed and at the same time I'm trying not to play with a brutal sound but with a soft, deep, expressive sound which is, as I already told you, extremely appropriate for playing Bach. Then when you feel that you're comfortable and your left hand memorized very well all the position shifts which, by the way, have to be played horizontally, for example... 
You see this position shift? Don't uh, make a very big rotation and don't emphasize it. Play it as smoothly as possible. So, when you reach this stability, you can play it legato already. So, for this part, I have a fingering secret for you. When you play this third uh, F, A flat, you play it with the fourth and second finger, and then don't place the fourth finger on F again. Because it's not so simple to play with these fingers, the fourth and the fifth finger. Instead, place your thumb on the second F. This way you'll have more stability and it will be easier to play the left hand in a fast tempo, at the same time uh, making sure that all the notes, all the sixteenths are really exact. This is how it's going to sound like in a medium tempo which is hard to achieve when you're playing small notes only with the 4th and 5th finger. Then don't forget to play both hands together, uh, slowly at first, making sure that each finger has found its place and uh, feels comfortable and stable, and then you can uh, gradually increase the tempo. This is how I would practice this piece, and uh, I hope that my tips uh, are going to be helpful for your practice as well. Have an inspired practice today, and talk to you soon!